In Informatica Developer, we can create a data processor transformation with an XMAP to transform an example source in XML format to output in another XML format. We will add the data processor transformation to the employee's project in the Object Explorer view. Right-click the project to create a data processor transformation with the new transformation wizard. A data processor transformation uses an XMAP to transform a document in one XML hierarchy to a document in another XML hierarchy. Create an XMAP in the transformation. In the Objects view, click New, select XMAP, and click Next. Enter a name for the XMAP. By default, the XMAP is selected as a startup component. Click Next. We use an input schema to define the XML input structure. Select Create a new schema object. Select Create from XML schema. And near the Enter a URI to an XSD field, browse to the input schema file. Choose the schema, then click Open. Click OK, then Finish. We can add an example that we can use to test the XMAP. The example has the same structure as the files that you want to transform. Near to the Select Example Source field, click Browse to locate the example file. Our example file contains employee data that we want to transform. Click Open. XMAP requires that an input root element be selected. A schema may have several elements that can serve as root elements in the XML. When you add both a schema and an example file in the XMAP wizard, the wizard automatically chooses an input root element based on the hierarchies in both files. Click Next. To define the output structure, we need to select the output schema to use. The output schema defines the XML output hierarchy. Select Create a new schema object. Select Create from XML Schema, then near Enter a URI to an XSD field, browse to the Output Schema file. Choose the schema, then click Open. Click OK, then Finish. XMAP also requires that you choose a root element for the output. To select the root element, near Output Hierarchy root, click Choose to display output root element options. Select the output root element that you want to use. Click OK, then click Finish. We need to find the elements that we want to transform. We use the XMAP editor to examine the XML input and output hierarchies and map between input and output elements. Expand the view to the full screen. The XMAP editor shows the input schema hierarchy to the left and the output schema hierarchy to the right. To expand the hierarchy trees, right-click the Input and Output Tree Root Element and select Expand All. Our input file contains employee information for several companies. The company element repeats for each company and contains sub-elements, such as the name of the company and employees with their details. For each company element in the input, we want to produce a firm element in the output. You can create a mapping statement by dragging a node from the input schema to a node in the output schema. The XMAP editor adds the mapping statement to the mapping statement grid. Drag the mouse from the company input schema node to the firm output schema node. The XMAP editor creates a repeating group statement in the grid. Now we want to pass the name of the company to the output. Drag the mouse from the co-name input schema node to the firm name output schema node. The editor creates a map statement that is indented. This means it is nested within the context of the repeating group above it. Let's check what results we receive with this XMAP. 
use the data viewer view to preview the example source. Close the XMAP editor to expand the data viewer view. By default, the input pane shows the example source file. We can use this file to check that the XMAP works correctly to map information as expected. We can validate and run the data processor transformation, then check the output to ensure that the data is processed as expected. Click Run to check the output data. The data processor transformation reads the example source file, transforms the data, and displays the output in the data viewer view. We see company data in the output. The data looks correct. Now let's return to the XMAP editor. We want to pass the data for the company's employees to the output XML. Drag the mouse from the employee input schema node to the staff output schema node. The XMAP editor adds a repeating group statement to the grid. For each employee element in the input data, the statements nested under this repeating group statement are performed. Each employee element in the input contains sub-elements with employee contact information. Let's pass the personal details of each employee to the output. To start, pass the employee gender information to the output. Drag the mouse from the gender input schema node to the gender output schema node. Now let's pass the employee ID output. Drag the mouse from the employee ID input schema node to the staff ID output schema node. Then let's pass the employee address. Drag the mouse from the address input schema node to the location output schema. Let's check what results we receive at this point. In the data view review, click Run to check the output data. We see employee data in the output. The data looks correct. Now we return to the XMAP editor. We want to pass the employee name to the output. In the input schema, there are distinct elements for the first and last name. Let's combine them into one element for the output. First, add a map statement. In the XMAP editor grid, right click and select New Map. Let's name the map statement Employee Name. Mapping statements contain fields that you can configure to customize the statement. We use the XPath editor to configure expressions. To open the XPath expression editor, Click the arrow to the right of the input field. The XPath editor has a navigation panel with a function library that you can use to create XPath expressions. On the left, the XPath expression editor displays the schema and function tabs, and on the right, the expressions pane. Use tabs on the left to choose XPath functions, input schema nodes, or output schema nodes. XPath is a query language that the XMAP uses to choose nodes in the XML and perform computations. Drag functions or nodes from the tab into the expression pane on the right or type an expression directly into the pane. The functions are standard for the W3C XML path language. The function library also includes some functions that are specific to the data processor transformation. In the XPath editor, open the XPath tab and select Functions String. To combine the first and last name, use the concat function that appends one string to another. Double-click the concat function. The XPath expression editor displays the concat expression that you selected in the expression string. Now let's add the input elements. Open the input schema tab to the left and drag the first element into the concat function. Then we need to add a space between the first and last name. To add the last name, in the input schema tab to the left, find the last element and drag it into the end of the concat function. Let's test the expression to ensure that it produces the expected result. Click Test Expression. The XPath editor tests the XPath expression on the example source, then shows expressions in the test pane 
the expression produces the correct result. To validate that the expression follows the XPath rules, click Validate. Since the expression is valid and the test results are correct, click OK. The expression is added to the mapping state. We need to define the output element that receives the employee name. Drag the mouse from the name output scheme field into the output field of the employee name state. The combined first and last name will now be passed to the name element in the output element. Now let's run the data transformation and check the output again. In the data viewer view, click run to check the output data. We see that the employee names are passed to the output. Data looks right. That completes this demo. To summarize, we created a data processor transformation, created and configured an XMAP, previewed the transformation, ran the transformation, and then checked the results. If you have feedback on this demo or to request a demo on another topic, email us at infa underscore documentation at informatica.com. You can also tweet us on the Infa Support Twitter site.